David Newton with ESPN.com. Um, you mentioned back, I guess, during the offseason that uh, Matt Rule came out with a helmet and pads when you were at Temple. Um, has he done anything crazy here, and has his coaching style changed from college to the NFL? Uh, no, man. He, uh, same guy, you know, same energy, same as I've always, you know, known him and, you know, just keeping in touch with him over the years. You know, he's the same guy, but. You know, he's a high energy guy. He gets out there, you know, he encourages all of the coaches. You know, we're doing the players doing conditioning. It's like, look, if you're willing, you're able, you know, the coaches should go out there, join in and, you know, get that conditioning in with the fellas. At the end of the day, we all need to be active. So he encourages that player coach relationship, that competitive nature from top to bottom. Tahir, Josh Graham, Sports Hub Triad. What can you tell me, dating back to your days in New Jersey, your first impression? of Temple coach Matt Rule recruiting you? Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, he was the offensive coordinator when I was going to Temple. So, um, you know, initially it was like a Mark D'Onofrio where, you know, he's just high. Like, you know, you see, you think Matt's over the top, high energy, just go, go, go. I think that, you know, they just always fed off each other. D'Onofrio, he was the defensive coordinator. Matt was the offensive coordinator. And, you know, he was just – it was you look forward to it every day. You knew he was going to give you all type of exotic looks, all type of stuff that was going to make you think and just keep you on edge. And it was going to be competitive. He was going to make sure he was going to get out there and have to go. If he had to run a route against a uh, defensive player, he was going to try to route him up and try to make him look bad. So that's always been the type of guy he is. And that's why I've always respected him. You know, exactly what he asks, you know, and requests from you is, you know, all you can get, all your energy and everything and go 100 miles per hour when you're on the field. And he does the exact same thing. You know, he loves the game. Tyra, uh, this is Miles Simmons from Panthers.com. Just wondering, uh, what do you feel like uh, this uh, longer ramp up can do for you guys in terms of building your communication? And is it a positive? And also, do you feel like uh, tackling could be a problem? It could come week one. And how do you prevent that from happening? Uh, I think the uh, the way things are being ramped up and how we're unpacking and unrolling things, um, it's definitely beneficial. You know, it's uh, beneficial to the older guys, you know, the rookies. It's beneficial to coaches. It's beneficial to everyone in the organization for the simple fact that we've been away from the game for, you know, for months, you know, since the end of the season, regular season, postseason, whatever you have it. And, you know, you need to get your football legs back under you. And although, yeah, you've been training, you've been working with your personal training, doing whatever you, you know, been doing to try to get ready for this, there you, you can't get ready for football without playing football. You know, there's no way around it. That's the only way you can get in in football shape is by actually going out there playing football. So the way, you know, we're kind of, you know, easing into it, you know, especially not having preseason games and all of that stuff, you know, it's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. It's a lot of individual. It's a lot of coaching. And it's giving the coaches to really detail everything. And, you know, it's been beneficial for everyone. And uh, I, from the tackling standpoint, I'll just say, you know, it really goes back to your technique. You know, for most guys, guys have been playing since they were, you know, seven years old. In my case, I've been playing since I was nine. You know, you're talking about 21 years of football now up to this point. You know, shit, I would say I got my Ph.D. in the, in the sport, you know. Um, but, you know, it, the game is the game. You know, if you have the body mechanics and everything down pat, you practice your technique, you make sure you come to balance, your feet aren't crossed over all over the place, and, you know, your eyes are where they need to be, I think you'll make off well. Um, hey, Elena Gatzenberg with the Charlotte Observer. Um, I was wondering for you, I know you have younger children. What kind of went into your decision to play? And, you know, as your family in Charlotte, what's the past few months been like for you? Uh, for me, you know, we've been, you know, pretty much doing exactly what everyone else has been doing over the past few months, quarantining and, you know, keeping that social distance, just being smart about everything, especially with me having a newborn. You know, he's four months now. Uh, I've had to, you know, alter my training and everything and be extremely cautious when in and out of the home, you know, as far as taking the cloth, the clothes and putting directly in the washer, you know, keeping my hands clean and everything like that. But as far as, you know, what, go, what went into me actually playing is, you know, I, lo I love the game. And it's, at the end of the day, you know, I wanted to play. And as long as I felt safe and comfortable with the, the guidelines and how everything was going to be set up within the facility, 
you know, that was going to ultimately, you know, determine whether or not I was going to either opt out or, or not. And when I stepped in the, you know, the Bank of America, the day of the physicals, the way they had everything set up, you know, all little locker space and everything around the facility, you know, the suites and everything the guys have to be able to do the virtual meetings and everything. I felt comfortable with that to where it's the only time we have to really be around each other was practice. And, you know, now that was that I felt good about going coming back and playing the season and on top of that, you know, just wearing the shield so the face mask around. And I think at this point, you know, not really just insert myself back into the house, you know. So I stay at the hotel to continuously, you know, protect my family. It's hard, you know, because you know, I have four boys and they, you know, they face light up and they look forward to me being in the house all day, every day. But, you know, I, at the end of the day I gotta do what's best for them in the sense of keeping them safe. Hey, I'm on the Charlotte Post. Um, you've touched on the the best way to adapt to this level is obviously you know the more reps you can get, the better. For guys who are rookies and this is their first experience of the NFL, how are you helping them along in their development at this level? Uh, for me, it's just um, just taking the time to go over a few things after practice. You know, not rushing off the practice field, understanding that you know we have to make up for lost time at this point. Um, you know, they're, they're just coming in like a deer in the headlights, you know, eyes wide open, not knowing exactly what's going on. But, you know, I take it, you know, I take it serious and, you know, being a veteran, being a leader um, to, you know, kind of put their mind at ease and get them to understand, look, this is not your first year playing football. Yes, this is your first year in the league, but this isn't your first year playing football. So, go back to your training, you know, all of the stuff that you've learned over the years since you've been playing football, that's what you, you know, rely on, you know, just go put your mind at ease, make sure that you put your eyes where they need to be, you know, focus in on the technique, the details, and just listen to the coaching, you know, and then just making sure that we're pushing each other. If I see something that's not quite right, you know, I chime in, hey, look, you might want to, you know, tweak this a little bit or do this differently. And on top of that, I'm open-minded enough to, you know, take, you know, pointers from them. You know, I'm always eager to, you know, learn from others. So I'll ask them questions. Hey, what you thought about that rep? You know, just to kind of open, like make them feel comfortable to, you know, speak on certain things and not just kind of let guys make mistakes or see something wrong and just be like, oh, okay, well, I think that's the way that's supposed to happen. No, you know, ask me questions. I leave the floor open for, I don't care, this is year nine or a rookie. Uh, Let me see. One of my old head uh, coaches, uh, Jim Caldwell, used to say, a good idea holds no rank. You know, so at the end of the day, don't get caught up in, okay, if you're a 10-year vet or if you're a rookie coming in. Everybody got something to say. Everyone has, you know, uh, good thoughts. And you just got to feed off each other. Hey, Tahir. Uh, Jonathan Alexander with Shot Observer. I hope you're doing well, man. You know, you, you spoke about doing, staying in- Doing well, boss. Appreciate yeah, it. Good, good, yeah. You spoke about staying in the hotel and to make sure your, your family was safe. When you when you decided on whether you were playing this season, what were the most important things that you needed to know, um, you know, before playing and, 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 and then making sure your, your family was safe? At the end of the day, uh, one of the most important things was how they were going to, you know, monitor and track everyone's, you know, uh, you know, distance, you know, how close are you, you know, being uh, when you're in the building, uh, making sure that, you know, when guys like, what are you going to, not even more so when you're in the building, when you're in the building, okay, it's easy. Everyone has odds on each other. Okay, wait, wait, you're too close. So, oh, you know, put your mask on. Uh, you know, that's, that's the easy part, but how things were going to go when you're away from the building. And there's more so, I think it, it really goes back to policing each other, making sure, reminding each other, hey, man, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we all want to keep each other safe and, you know, just constantly reminding each other to be respectful of others, you know, be respectful of others' families. Even if you don't have any children, you know, you might have a elderly, you know, older, you know, mother, elder, you know, grandmother, grandfather, someone that might have some type of pre-existing health issues where you don't want to take that stuff back home. So, you know, we, we we remind each other to come in the building with that in mind. Don't go out there, put yourself at risk. And then, oh, knowing you do, you're doing that and living that way, bring that back into the locker room without, you know, saying anything or doing anything, to, you know, staying home to protect yourself and others. So for me, it was just 
when I came in and I realized, okay, and we don't necessarily have to be all up on each other. Like, you know, the days of old where, you know, you're right there, probably six, forget six feet, six inches from, you know, the next person. And when I came in and realized, okay, everyone, you know, pretty much have their own setup. You can be in your own world if you want to, except on the practice field when everyone's running around and, you know, getting after it. But for me, it was just, uh, you know, my mom was put at ease when I saw everything was set up. But at the end of the day, you know, you still can't really, you know, be sure, you know, what guys are doing away from the facility. So you can just, you know, hope and pray that, you know, they're being uh, respectful. Hey, to hear this is Joe Person with the uh, Athletic here in Charlotte. I appreciate you doing this. And, and just to follow up that thought, have you guys had any discussions about a voluntary bubble like we've seen with the Saints and now the Buccaneers are talking about it and also Dallas, where and, you know, maybe all of, are already kind of doing that with the hotel, but what are your thoughts on a, a voluntary bubble either during camp or the season or both? I don't know. You know, at this point, you know, we're not going about things in that manner. And I think the, the way things are rolling, you know, it's been working out. Um, and you know, I don't see any reason to change it. Um, you know, and that's just really my take on that one. So here, hey, uh, it's Josh Klein from the Riot Report. Um, obviously, being a uh, being a professional football player is one of the most pressure filled jobs there is. Do you feel additional pressure? being the first linebacker to kind of step in as the Mike linebacker after Luke Keekley retired? No, uh, not necessarily. I wouldn't say pressure. You know, it's just, you know, at the end of the day, I'm always, you know, I'm hypercritical of myself. I would always say, say I'm my biggest critic. So I'm always looking to ways to improve my game and go out there and, you know, just make sure I can do any and everything to help my team. Um, that's how I always approach the game. And that's how I always approach the game. Um, so, I, with that being said, I still take advantage of the fact that Luke is in the building. You know, I'm not prideful in any way, shape, or form, or egotistical, and like, oh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to talk to him, you know, just because, you know, he was here and everyone loved Luke. No, I, I love the way Luke played, you know, like respect and more power to him because of the fact that he played the game at a high level for a long time. You know, we came in in the same year, and I've always admired the way he played the game from afar, the big plays, the energy he played with. So for me, you know, it's a blessing for, you know, to even still – be able to pick his brain, you know, and he's, he's a great dude. You know, he's open and always willing to sit down, break down film. You know, when he's out on the field, you know, I'll, I'll ask him what he thought about certain things or, you know, what is he looking at when he's dissecting runs or passes. And, you know, I'd be a fool not to take advantage of the fact that he's still around. We have time. So we, are following two, up. we have two. Hold on a second, guys. We got time for two questions. Uh, Tyre's got a tight time with us. So we'll go Josh Graham and then finish with David. Tahir, I just wanted to follow up on that because Jeremy's mentioned yesterday he's used Luke as a resource. And the film study with Luke, it's become almost a thing of legend. How would you describe those film sessions breaking down film with Luke? Now, we, you know, it's just moving forward. It's more so, you know, uh, move, once we get an opportunity to do so right now, it's being as though we're still fresh in the building still dissecting the system, you know, digesting everything and making sure that we understand what our role is and what's being requested of us first. And then, you know, just kind of picking his brain here and there. So, you know, I try not to, you know, take up too much of his time because at the end of the day, he still has a job, you know, to commit to and make sure that he's, you know, being mindful of, uh, you know, all of the things in, within his um, uh, within his realm and then, you know, still, you know, taking the, the coaching and everything from Phil Snow and Mike Zarago, you know, and Al Holcomb where, you know, they're kind of teaching us the scheme and the system and everything. But, uh, you know, it's just small talk right now as far as seeing the level of a back, seeing the formation and everything like that and the telltale signs of uh, what plays you're going to get, really. So no serious uh, film sessions just yet. All right. Last one to David. Here, to hear. Last, uh, last, last one to David. Thank you. Here, what does the speed of your wide receivers uh, with Samuel and DJ and Robbie do to a defense? It stresses them out. It, it, it keeps them up at night. That's that's exactly what the hell it does. You know, them guys are, you know, blazing fast. You know, you go out there and, you know, we're looking like, 
golly, you know, we got to go up against it, you know, against that. We, we have to, you know, match up with that and everything. And it's a great challenge for us to have, you know, good receivers like that with that type of, you know, speed and practice. Because therefore, once you get into the season, once we get rolling, you've seen it already. You know, I don't think there's, you know, any other guy, too many other guys that have that type of speed, you know, and uh, finesse and hands. So, um their talent is definitely, you know, it can keep you up. It'll keep you on your toes. It makes you, it makes you think, you know, you're not going to, you're definitely not going to take it lightly.